uh, talented individuals can actually take it, even just through the first 10 waves of hardcore. 10 waves is all you need to do, says Rod. <laughs> of course, tomorrow is going to be the first of 50, the full thing. Talking a little about that, do you, I mean, Steph, Gold Glove, two very, very good experienced Gears of War players. Do you think they're going to be okay? It's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's all about teamwork, picking the right classes, having the right skills, and seeing what they can so do with it. excited for that. That will be tomorrow night. Team Fem Steph versus Team Gold Glove in a first to 50 challenge. But right now, we're going to jump in to the reveal, the first ever live and big stream match of a well, game of Horde. So what, you see, what are we seeing right now, Rod? So this some, is the, uh, how you begin. You, you pick up the Fabricator, which is our sort of military-grade 3D printer that will actually make your fortifications, make your weapons. So the first thing you have to do is pick up where do you want to kind of start your defense. So now they're just they're picking it up, they're finding a place on the map to deploy it. Once they deploy it, the clock will start and the monsters will come. But they're still trying to find that right location. And you can see some cool characters. We've got Zombie Dom, Tomoranya, all part of our Brothers to the End pre-order uh, exclusive. Uh, so now, there you go, the wave one's beginning. Uh, and now it's all about earning some energy. You see those little, uh, that icon there about some energy. As you kill things, you'll pick up energy. And you bring it to the fabricator, and that allows you to build. And so they're so putting down spikes right there. We heard. We talk, they talked a little about burning and building bridges. Looks like in Horde, we're still going to be uh, building fortifications It's here. building and wow. burning barriers, yeah, at this point, <laughs> is basically Barriers, not bridges. Interesting. So the fabricator is really the key to where you're going to set up as a team and where you want to start. Looks like they decide to go back into their spawn. We're seeing Relic right now. Uh, Relic is a map. Is, you know, where do you think, in your opinion, is the best place to set up? Do they think it's a good spot? Uh, I think they picked a pretty good spot going back towards spawn. You know, you want to—it's a, a symmetrical map, so you you want to kind of sort of defend across the width of the map, which is a good place to go. And you can sort of see a little bit about what their classes they've, they've chosen. Uh, with you pick the heavy Oscar as an example is a heavy in this case, and you know that because he's carrying a boom shot. It's the default weapon of the heavy class, uh, and they get sort of bonuses for turret use, uh, and they get obviously having that boom shot all the time is really handy. So there are classes in Gears of War 3 Horde. Uh, does each class have an assigned character? Uh, no, you can mix and match as much as you want. It's not like Overrun and Judgment. Whatever class can have whatever character. And so it's and you're not locked to your weapon, so if you're an engineer and you want to pick up something off the battlefield, you can. The only thing you're sort of locked to is your repair tool and your pistol slot. But everything else you can you can pick up and mix and match as you so want. So I don't have to worry about a bunch of bears running around report or yeah, I mean, the heavy, over you know, the they engineer. have the boot shot, they have explosive weapon benefits, but they can swap that out for a drop shot and they still get the same benefits because it's another explosive weapon. Right? Very cool. Very cool. So we're gonna see round number two here. We saw some new enemies here in this wave. Number one, those are some DBs, or we saw Peacemakers. Uh, is that the standard for wave, or round one or wave one of Horde? Is it going to be DBs only? No, it, it mixes and matches. Like, you know, what happens is the way the system works is that the, basically they get a certain amount of points they use to allocate their, uh, you know, what the system allocates points for to the spawn. So you can get kind of a variety within a certain type. So it could be a lot of one kind or just a few mix and match, right? So, But they do sort of go up in, there'll be certain uh, enemies that show up on certain waves. You know, you know when you see uh, a Guardian, as an example, a floating robot, like you know that's in the later waves of that round. And we'll probably see one as we get through. So breaking on the action, what we're seeing right now, we saw Sadco pick up a headshot. And I think we saw that the teams from the last match have submerged Game Tech are now buddies. They're now teammates trying to repair the relationship after that one. And uh, round number two, we see them working together, rotating as a team. This is a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing in the Horde. You know, they're, they're rotating around the map, they're not really fortifying in one area. Is that something that's different about Horde 3.0? Well, no, I think it has to do more with where we are in the, in the cycle, right? Like, it's, the Horde is a 50 wave. Uh, kind of an endurance test, you know, it's a fight for survival. And these first 10 waves, you can be a little bit looser in terms of where you fortify and having to stay behind the barriers, because it really hasn't impressed you yet. So these first 10 waves are really just a, a taste of it. So if they were to fail in the first 10 waves, I don't know if we can keep going after that, but <laughs> I think that it's that notion of being able to, like, this is where you're earning some energy. And the, and the trick here is, like, they have certain paths, like a scout as an example. The scout gets, it doubles the energy you earn if they do it during combat. So you'll see that when the scout goes out and, and, and they have the one with the shotgun, you can see the Nasher, that if they go out and they pick it up while combat, they'll get an extra bonus. They'll get double the energy, double the energy. So the trick is you really want to use that scout to go and claim all that energy. And then you can actually get a skill, which allows you to get an extra bonus when you deposit. So you really want that scout out there picking up all that energy. Wow, that is really cool. And, you know, me as a, as a multiplayer, that's awesome to hear. You know, that takes some skill and puts it into Horde in a major way. You want to give the scout someone that has good movement, someone that's maybe fast. And right, so now we just have, we have someone go down. So now their cog takes spawn into the world. So it's another thing we're doing differently in Horde 3.0 is you can actually recover your teammates. So you can go over and pick up those cog takes, bring them back to the fabricator, and that'll bring them back to life. So you can see right now the carrying Vladimir Blue's cog tags. So head back to the fabricator, and the first one's always free. 
Uh, so they, they take that back and then they'll come back and then back in the fight. So it's going to cost you something after the first one? After the first one, it starts ink going higher and higher with each one. So you, you don't want to do that too often. And then here you said that's going to cost energy, or what is it that it costs? Is it yeah, it costs energy, which will drain. It'll drain up. Because you can see in the, in the top left there, they're showing you how much energy you're carrying personally and how much is stored in the fabricator. And so you want to, that as you you know bring people back, they'll start draining your fabricator. Wow, that is so cool. So energy replaces money or currency in, in Horde 3.0? Yeah, it's energy. Be able to feed the fabricator to be able to create the you know okay. the fortifications you want. There you have it. Very cool. You see there we go. Wave three. Two kills. Chainsaw suit with four kills there, and that one is round number three. They are cruising right now, but Rod did say that they can't make it to wave ten. Very embarrassing. We'll see what they can do as it gets more and more difficult. So in wave we, seven through ten. Sorry, interrupt me. Apologize. So what you see there is like picking it up in between waves. They don't get that bonus. So you're getting like half the energy you could be getting if you're doing eleven combat. So you really want to try to. It forces the scout to be aggressive and get out there. I see. Okay. So you really want to play scout if you're the type of person that likes to get down and dirty in close range. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we give them the, the shotgun. We the expect them to be out in the middle of all of it, right? And uh, you want to play that way. But what's interesting is that there, you don't have to, you're not fixed to one of each type. There's five classes and five players, but it doesn't mean you have to have one of each class. You can do all engineers, you can do all heavies, you can do a mix and match, you can do one of each. It's really up to you and your team and your play style to figure out how you want to play. So it's almost like an evolving meta in Horde. Yeah, absolutely. And, and because you have so many like 11 different skills each class has, but you're only ever able to bring in at max level, you can bring five. In this case, they're only able to bring three skills in. So of those 11 skills, they have to pick which three they want to take with them, and then they play to those, those, those abilities. So you touched on something that might be a little bit new to people. There are skills. Is it almost like a skill tree, a talent tree? What is that? Yeah, well, you have 11 of them, and you basically you are able to, through the card system we have, you're able to kind of level up those skills so they get more and more beneficial as you go, up to five different levels. Uh, and so you can take it even higher and higher with the cards. And the cool is that just by playing Horde, you'll earn again currency that you go get cards just by playing. Wow. And Rod, this, it's been three minutes. I have not played Horde yet myself, and I could not be more excited. It just seems like it's so much deeper, so much richer in gameplay, in metagame, and in content. You know, the, 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 yeah, the reviving piece, taking back the Fabricator alone, we're going to see that right now. Right, so you see right now they have a bonus objective. If they get, get 10 kills in the 30-second window, they'll get a big airdrop of, of weapons and, and in-game energy that they can use in the Fabricator right now. So you see that countdown. They got three of 10. Now they got nine seconds to get this other seven, which of course they won't be able to do. But yeah, as they forward. get kills, that window will change. Wow, uh, very cool. So 10 awesome. kills in 30 seconds, definitely doable, especially when you have a heavy on your team that is using a boom shot. We saw this goes Dom with a boom shot in his hands. I'm with Tycho right now. Boom shots are flying. What class is Tycho from? Yep, he's going for a revive here. Oh, Sentinel, which is the Guardian with a rocket launcher. So that Sentinel's dangerous. And the Sentinel is really this Guardian that has a shield in front of it. It's very meant to sort of force co-op play. You want one team member to take down the shield, and then the other team to come in and take him down. On board right so now. So there you go. See when Tekka went back, brought back a lot of his team at the, the fabricator. Oh. Someone's down. Man down. Oh, oh the Sentinel putting in the rockets. <laughs> yeah, they ate a rocket. What, what, what uh, level are they playing on? Is this hardcore? This is hardcore. Okay. So this is, you can go down pretty quick. That's what those first, the shock trackers, which are the rolling balls, they can actually down you in one explosion. So you really wow. got to be careful when the, once those trackers come out. Very cool. So we're seeing some new uh, enemies. We're seeing some new weapons, of course, and a lot of new gameplay here in the metagame of board. Of all the new enemies, which are some of your favorites to fight against? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's really cool to see like this is where it starts to as you start to move through you can see like if you go back to where that sentinel was, it could actually go and rip the salvo off. It could have taken that rocket launcher out of it, but they're still new to the game. I don't think they know everything they could do yet. But it's one of the cool things is that when you when you fight a guardian and you guardian and you down it, you can actually go and rip the heavy out of it. And so it's either carrying uh, this new try shot, which is a kind of a, a new three barrel gun, or you can actually pull up the uh, the rocket launcher, what we call the salvo. Uh, so now here we see they're going in, they're putting out uh, the sentries. So you can, and what's nice with the sentries, it shows you what the range, how far it goes, wow, how wide it is. Uh, so that they can what actually see the is it a class that can actually a sentry with others, or can anyone use a sentry? Uh, no, there's just a one type of sentry that goes, but yeah, as you level it up, it becomes more effective. And then it's, an engineer can have skills that can actually change rate of fire, health, amount of ammo, and so you can really modify the sentry based on the game. See, here's the engineer doing repairs down here, loading up the same amount of ammo. To do that there. We saw a death actually, so things are getting a little bit more difficult here. Wave number five. Of course, we are going to 10. Some good shots from Gabe, doing a good job staying alive with his Lancer. Yeah, they really need to start focusing on that Guardian. Like, 
Yeah, you can see there, you get the double bonus to 198 plus 198, so we're getting double the money by having that scout go. Get scout that got the energy. I see. Yeah, so and anyone can pick up energy, but if the scout gets it, they get double bonus. Correct. That's, that's their passive. That's what makes the scout. Because the scout can treat it as their weapons. They can go pick up an overkill. They can pick up an M bar. They can pick up whatever weapons they want. What makes the scout a scout is that sort of notion of being about the energy. Wow, and the horde just continues to impress me. Once again, I can't yeah, say yeah, how deep it is, how rich it is. Money, and, and we actually can hear, listen, we hear them saying, let me get the money, let me get the money. That's the communication here. The scout has always wanted to be a little bit more greedy. And it's for the benefit of the team, right? Yeah, it's playing to your strengths. Like, you want, it's, like, it's like in hockey when you're Canadian. Uh, it's like in hockey, you gotta course. play your position, right? You gotta play your position. And so this is like, if you're the scout, let the scout go get the energy. And if you're the sniper, they like let them go get the headshot. You know, like that kind of stuff. You have to recognize it's not just about what's all about rushing out. You know? it's, like, it's not a bunch of six-year-olds shaking us in a soccer ball, right? You have to play your position and know your role, and so play to your class. That is awesome. Very cool. So, uh, well, so I just want to see how they play that tomorrow. We have some high-skilled and experienced visual players playing for tomorrow. Gold Glove is known to be a great sniper. Maybe he'll play as a sniper class, right? Maybe. Yeah. And, 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 it, and there's some great skills for the sniper. They have an oh, yeah. explosive yeah. headshot. No when way. you pop the headshot, it actually goes into splash damage and destroy enemies around it. What? That so there's a lot of really cool. And the Heavy has one of my favorite, which is that it has a when you use the bolt talk that with every the smaller the amount of ammo you have left the stronger the shot gets wow. so every shot is stronger and stronger and stronger and so you're blowing people away with your bolt talk that's but, unbelievable yeah, what other type of skills that are out there you know you mentioned the skills of the sniper that sounds so cool what other type of skills right, are changing right out there that well it, it comes down to just leaning into what they do right here like, the engineer can do like repair efficiency they, you know they get Stronger fortifications, uh, and those sorts of things, right? And then the scout is about movement, nice. speed, and health. And they're out right, they're nose to nose with everybody, right? The soldier is about assault rifles, so you can get like huge amounts of ammo. I, I, I've had a Lancer with 1,100 rounds in it, right? And and when things, the soldier, the soldier spawns with frag grenades. Nobody else does. So you can go around and start finding grenades. And you can get it. There's a skill that allows you to find up to six frag grenades and more in the environment. So you can really set up some really cool stuff. Yeah, that is awesome. Very cool. Uh, I've heard a little bit about the lock, the weapon lock. Talk to me a little about the weapon lock. Oh, that's one of the new yeah, it's going to get happen, I hope we do, but uh, in case it doesn't happen, talk about that. Yeah, well, so one of the things that, we, you know, in the previous uh, board matches, what would happen is a lot of bunch of stuff would fall on the ground and it would just get cleaned up in between waves. And so you wouldn't be able to sort of stockpile it. So we have this new fortification called the Weapons Locker that you can actually go and pick up that rocket launcher, put it in the Weapons Locker, and not only will it hold on to it, it will actually be loaded for you. Wow. So you can go and drain it down to one rocket, put it away, fight for a couple waves, come back, and now I've got a fully loaded rocket launcher ready to go again. So it, it, it tiers over time because there's more and more ammo over time? Or yeah, and, and what's cool is that as you level up, like as they spend money, what you'll see uh, on the fabricator is that as you spend money, it gets closer and closer to leveling up. So the more you use the fabricator, the faster it levels. And then so you get like a weapons locker, level one, you get one slot, level two, two slots, level three, two slots, level four, four slots, so you can store more and more stuff on it. Well, we and just saw it, Cyan Boomshot on screen, took a lot of uh, damage to die. Talking about that, I mean. Yeah, it's just a really tough enemy. You know, they bring in the heavy weapons at that level. You see their value by the the stack of energy that's left behind. So you saw the three stack. That tells you that's a very valuable. I got a lot enemy. of loot. So, so I, I, I got a lot of money to deposit. I might have six. some personal incentive in asking you this. Wave 50. What can we expect? It's crazy, right? Like, so we call the we call the, them poisons. Like, as you go through each section, they'll go to they'll double health, they'll double accuracy, they'll double damage, and that last 40 to 50 is like two and a half times everything. So two and a half times damage, two and a half times accuracy, two and a half times health. It's a push. It's a grind, right? So here it's just it's kind of au natural, but those, as it goes, it gets harder and harder and harder. And you really have to play into your skills and play your role to get survivors to your way. Which I'm going to be really curious to see tomorrow night if we can actually see the first four, uh, first to 50 like on the stream. Wait, you think it might not happen? There is a possibility. Whoa. Well, the, the part of it is like I've, I've been part of it. I've, I've been part of a group that's picked the wrong classes, classes. picked the wrong skills, didn't work together. And you can actually get caught in a negative loop where you can't rebuild, you can't recover. Um, and so you have to start over. We had, we had to start over. Like we got to like 28. We wiped three, four times. Oh, yeah, and then we just said, back to, to one. We started again. And, and, uh, and then off we went. And we got to 50, but we had to play differently. We made a mistake. And I think with new players not knowing how to work together, there's a good chance they're going to stall. Gold Glove, my friend, if you're watching this, if you're a fan of Gold Glove, tweet at him. Rod Ferguson called you out. He's saying there's a chance that our squad, the best squad, won't make it to 50 tomorrow. We'll see about that, Rod. That is my, now my mission to prove you wrong tomorrow. <laughs> and I, I well, now they've got the competition. Now it's not just about can they get there, who's going to do it first. That is true. It has a whole other layer. <laughs> and, you know, at first, when I heard this, of course, we're playing two different games of War. We're 
for just a second, I thought we were in the same world, playing five on five boards. Each map is symmetrical, right? So one team on one half, and the other half. Yeah, yeah, that's not going that's to work, but that would be crazy. So here we have the shock turret set up. So what the shock turret does is it has a long range stun. But as you go up in level, it can actually get stronger and stronger. We're actually going to start popping and destroying it along. Thank you. It's really useful tool. But one of the things that's cool too is you can upgrade on the fly. So if the fabricator goes to level 2, you just go to your, your fortification, you pick it up, you upgrade it, you put it back down, and off you go. Right? So it's not it's a really easy process to upgrade as long as you have the energy of the fabricator. And you can see here, we've got over 4,000 fabricators. It's raining now because I think someone's preparing. But it's, uh, they, they can really tap into the fortification for a lot of money. So here's the pouncer. Pouncer, you've got to be careful. It's a co-op enemy. It'll knock you down, bring you down, and take you out if you don't get, if you don't get free. Oh, very cool. And we're looking at the heavy right now with the shot. Oh, oh no! A self kill. No. I gave the captors curse on that one. <laughs> I called him out and immediately demolished himself with the boom shot. So he's dead now. Gabe picked up his cock tags and took it back to the Fabricator right, Revival. Yeah, yeah take here. it back. But it, if you're close to ending the wave, they'll, they'll get back up just by the wave ending. So you only have to do it to really, you have to look at that eventually. It's like, do we spend the money or do we just get the three kills and get them up? You know, they have to spend the money. So. They're on wave seven, they're doing strong. They're moving fast here, so that's that's pretty good. We've got some good defenses going. Look at that sentry shock turret kind of combination there, which is good. And, and the barriers will slow the enemy down as they try to cross them, so they'll give the sentry and the shock turret a chance to like, do their work. They're, they're setting them pretty well, actually. That's awesome. So now we have another bonus objective. Can they finish off. wave 8 in 245? They do that. Can yeah, air drop, lots of weapons. Lots of so the bonus is different each round. Yeah, there's headshot bonuses, okay. and there's execution bonuses, and time bonuses. There's kills. Similar with, to Gears 3. Similar to Gears 3, yeah. And it doesn't come up like maybe every second wave or so. Um, but it's really not, like, they're kind of nice here. When you get up into the 40s, they're mandatory. Like, you, if you get when four rocket launchers come spilling out, it's joyous. So, like, that's what you need to carry you through that next wave. That's awesome. Um, so, can you move the fabricator and yeah. replace it? Can you Absolutely. It? You can take the you fabricator every, anywhere you want. Wow. And it's a two man carrier, so one person can drag it slowly, but if a second person gets on it, you can actually hustle it across the map. That's awesome. It's almost a feature in campaign kind of about the horde is the idea of teamwork and working together to complete the objectives. So that's yeah, awesome to see, and that creates the metagame, right? And I, I love that. I can't talk about it enough. The idea of energy, the idea of having to run around and get energy, you can't just fortify in one area. You have to really kind of rotate and move together as a team to succeed. If you can, you just won't be successful if you don't have much energy. Right. And you can see, like, the scout uh, tomorrow on you. The scout in this case is getting, like, double. But she just got pistol whipped in a most horrible fashion. By a swarm to the that's not nice. Uh, but after that, for a while, she rocked the double shotgun. You got the Nasher primary and the overkill secondary, which is a good combo. Yeah. Those guys are going to set It looks like it's coming out the wire here. Not oh looking no. good for this team. This is only wave eight. All up to Chainsaw Suit now. And some oh, turrets the to help out. Get back there. So he did get the contacts. He needs to run into the Fabricator to stay alive right now and keep his team alive. I think he's the only one alive. I see no, at least Tyco. two contacts well. on the ground out there. Did he pick him up? Oh, and this is a blood skill out there. So Tycho is still alive. Is that Tycho getting killed? Or is it, that is Tycho. Okay, okay. we got two. Get at least two. Get back to the There we go. Get back, get back. So if he gets more the than five, he will, he will resurrect his team. Yeah. We're going to point here. You'll see here. Touch. Boom, and wow, that is awesome. And he had to spend energy to do that, but we'll work. That one was free, right? Was and free. if you look at their money now, they're at 225 right, their energy in the fabricator. They don't have enough for another one. I see. Okay. So if somebody who goes down and dies, yeah, they're not going to be able to bring them back. Wow. So 50 seconds left on the bonus objective. I know, but they got four, only four enemies left. Yeah. Look at that stack energy. They need that scout to pick up that energy. The turrets really with two left, 40 seconds. Come on, where's the scout? Oh! Oh! Boom shot's gonna down him. Oh, it's a double. Oh, they got him both. He did get a both kill. No. He did get a both kills. He's so slow. Only one left. Oh my goodness. Oh!